Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me here. So in this video I thought I could answer some questions while I painted some mini studies. These little studies are something that I like to do when I feel a little bit stuck for inspiration and want to or for content purposes need to make some art. Generally, I'll take eight reference images, usually from Pinterest, and use them as a loose guide. And I'll split up the page into eight different sections of washi tape, like you can see here. And then I'll set a 10 minute timer for each piece and get painting. So usually I'll do about five minutes worth of laying down paint like this. And then I'll come back and I'll do another five minutes of adding pencils and pastels or whatever on top. And if I'm faster or slower than 10 minutes, I don't mind. This is 10 minutes is just really a guide. So it's not a very important time limit. It's just a general one so that I can kind of do them quickly and not get too bogged down in the details. I definitely recommend it as a fun exercise to not take too seriously and just have a little bit of fun with. Yeah, if you're feeling stuck, I'd recommend you pick up your paints or pencils and do the same. But in the meantime, we'll get into some frequently asked questions. So most of these are, well, some of these are questions that I took from uh, Instagram question box that I put up in my stories, but other ones are questions that I get frequently. So the first one is, how do I keep my artwork loose? The short answer for this is just by playing and putting as little pressure on myself as possible. It's actually a bit of a struggle for me to keep myself loose because in real life I am a very high strung person and I struggle to relax a lot. I'm a very, um, I'm a very anxious, have to be doing something, have to always work on something type person. So actually being loose for me is a hard thing to do which you might not realize I, I kind of cop on now that you might not get that from my art because it's quite the opposite but what I tend to do is because I'm, I'm quite like harsh on myself and strict on myself is that like I'll not want to paint something or not want to post something unless it's like perfect and great looking and really good that and like that ends up in me being too tight in my pieces like they'll end up very forced and not very loose especially when you're painting natural things like landscapes you want it to be kind of flowy and loose nearly because nature is flowy and loose so in order to do that one thing that really helps me is keeping a really cheap low pressure sketchbook so this sketchbook that you can actually see me working in here is my cheap i don't care what happens in this sketchbook sketchbook it's like maybe like two or three euro that I bought from a local shop. I don't think it even has a brand on it. It's it's really cheap. It's not good paper. The washi tape tears it, but handles mixed media fairly okay, apart from warping. But it's a sketchbook I don't care about. It. It's a sketchbook that I never really intend to show people. Obviously, in this case, I recorded it, so I knew I was going to show people this. But for a lot of the other pieces in the sketchbook, I just sit down. I don't record for a reel. I don't intend to ever post it for pictures. I'll just go and I'll splash a load of paint down and really experiment and have fun and just, yeah, get into it. I'll like splash a load of paint down, smear it all over the page, be like a five-year-old child finger painting and then I'll let that dry and scribble all over it and use a lot of different things and textures and stuff and not even try to make it a recognizable thing for the most part I'll just try and have fun and a lot of the times then it ends up being something that I actually really enjoy the look of in the end which is funny because you go in with no pressure with no intentions of making it good or pretty and it ends up being something you love because you're relaxed about it and you're not too uptight about it so yeah overall just lower your expectations and have fun and don't think this needs to be something that's good this needs to be something that's posted somewhere and um, that a lot of the time when I just let loose and say oh I'm so sick of making art for social media I'm just gonna have fun that's when I end up making the pieces that I enjoy the most and a lot of the times these little mini studies that I'm doing here end up being pieces that I really like because I'm under a bit of pressure to just get them done fast 
So I kind of force myself to be loose then to just really go for general vibes of a piece. The next question is, what artists am I inspired by? So long that well one of the answers to this is that I'm inspired by so many artists it's impossible to name them all but I'll go through a few that I really love and probably a few where you can see their influence in my work I'd say so the first one is no go bed on Instagram she I'm enamored by her use of oils they're just so oh she's so good with it like her colors and the way she just paints whenever I see her work I'm just inspired to pick up my oils and paint the next one is Cosmoriste. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they'll be up on screen here. Um, whenever their work comes up in my feed, I'm always so impressed by how loose they are and how like well they use colour and like their work is very loose, but you can still absolutely see the landscapes that they're based off of and they get such a lovely like just vibe from them. I really, I really, really like their work. Another one who I'm sure a lot of you know is Emma Carlyle. Um, I follow her on Patreon as well. Her work is stunning. I really love um, her like plein air location work as well. Because whenever I attempt to like, paint on location or do plein air, I always freeze up and get really anxious. And my paintings end up being so stiff and not at all what I was aiming to do initially. So... She's my goal for keeping looseness and kind of capturing landscapes in real life. And on the vein of plein air, uh, Michael Relth, he uses squash so well. And his like landscape and plein air work makes me want to like eat his paintings. I don't know, they just, they look really nice. And I also want to cry because I'll never be that good with squash. <laughs> I just, I just don't have that level of skill. Like the way he captures light by using colour it's oh it's so amazing I really love his work oh he captures like the moods and just vibes of every landscape he does and every plein air piece he does so well so that's it for my favourite artists that I can think of right now there's definitely way more out there and like oh probably hundreds that I haven't named but uh, those are just a few like top mentions another question I got was do I want to do larger scale pieces yes I do, but one thing I run into, which is an issue, is that larger scale pieces take more time. And we all know how much Instagram and social media forces you to post frequently. Um, so working on a larger scale piece kind of takes up just time that I don't really have if I'm trying to post frequently. But it's absolutely something I really want to try and make time for this year. Uh, I'm trying to use my time better this year so I'd love to if I had sort of a backlog of paintings built up maybe I could spend like a week just working on one larger piece I have done larger panel pieces in the past I'll pop in a picture of one big landscape that I did oh, it was probably two and a half years ago now I think it was 2020 and I really enjoyed working on that piece and I think I'd like to do larger pieces in oils and then let the oil dry and then layer mixed media over it but like I said time energy I'm not I'm not good uh, with that but yeah obviously I wouldn't I don't want to have to create for Instagram and have to create so often for social media but it's kind of we all know we kind of have to do it even though it's not very fun. Favourite colour palette? Do I have one at the moment? Yes. You can see from my previous two videos that I have a big, I was going to say a big grow, but I realise you're not Irish, you don't understand that. Um, A big love for like greyish blues mixed with pinks. So like kind of like pinks, bluey, grey colours like I did in my Folktale Week paintings and like I did in that painting of the deer. I really, I really enjoy that colour palette. I just think it's really moody. It's probably because as I'm recording this voiceover it's, it's the middle of winter and I know that like kind of when I did those two pieces it was like coming into like 
December, the end of November, start of December, and it was really, really moody. And I really like the kind of just the landscape and the, like the winter sun has makes such like gorgeous skies that I think like that's my winter color palette for sure. And then I think as I probably move in towards summer and spring, it will probably go back towards more like pinks and greens and brighter colors. There's a big theme of like pink in my work in general, which is funny. Pink is not my favorite color. It's blue, but I don't use much blues. It's always pinks. How do I keep up the motivation to paint? This, I don't think this is going to be the best answer or like the most appropriate advice to give out. Ah, maybe it is in a sense, but I force myself to paint. Um, I don't always feel motivated to paint. A lot of the time I don't feel motivated to paint. It's it's be sometimes I go through phases where it's more common that I feel motivation, but other times I won't I won't feel motivated to paint. I'll be like, oh I better just paint because I have it scheduled. So that's what I do. I schedule time to make art. Recently I've been uh, using a planner, the Hobonichi cousin, if you're interested in planners. And I have been scheduling time in that to paint. I tend to treat art like a job um, because one day I do hope it is my full-time job but in the meantime I think treating it like a job allows me to practice and be more consistent because the only way you'll develop and get better and improve is by just making art even if you don't feel like it's going to be good or you only ever want to make really good art when you're super inspired it's not going to lend itself to actually being beneficial overall if you only make good art um you have to make a craft art and art you're not too happy with in order to like kind of learn and grow from it at least that's what I find like it's kind of like going to the gym like I absolutely if I was to go to the gym when I only felt motivated to go to the gym I would never go to the gym probably um but you force yourself to go because you know you have to go you have to keep consistent with it or else you won't get stronger you won't get better you won't get fitter or whatever so I treat it similarly to that and that you just you just have to keep showing up to art and you just have to keep doing it whether or not you're like motivated or feeling really inspired by it you just kind of have to do it because if you want to do art you're going to have to do whether or not you want to do it. That's not a good answer, but I think it's a fairly realistic one. Another question that I get a lot is when am I going to start selling my prints and opening a shop? And I feel so bad when people ask me this because it's like, ah, I know I need to do it. I am. This is the one thing that I am absolutely procrastinating. But I promise you there will be a shop this year and there will be prints and maybe there will be stickers. Who knows? But yes, there will be a shop this year. I'm currently working on my website and my goal is that once I have my website done, I will then work on my shop. I promise you there will be a shop at some point this year. Can't guarantee when, but it will be in 2023. I swear, I swear, you can come back to this video and shout at me if there's not one in a year's time. <laughs> My next question is, where do I find inspiration? And the answer to that is loads of places. I get inspiration from every which way. Um, it's seeing other people's art on Instagram. I'm like, wow. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I'd love to do like, you know, a that, that color palette that they've used I really like that I'm really inspired by that or I love the way they drew a tree I should draw trees sorry I'm just looking at my tree now it's like I should draw trees um and sometimes I'll see certain shapes that are used and I'm like oh that shape would look really cool it's like xyz or something it's everywhere and also I get inspired by the nature around me I live in a very lovely little corner of the world and I can't deny that it's stunning where I live um, and based in the west of Ireland so it's very the natural beauty around here is gorgeous and I don't think I utilize it enough but definitely if I'm just driving through the countryside I'll like see certain scenes and I'll be like oh I really want to draw that and that's one of my goals is to try and get better at, at plain air this year because I think it would be lovely to just drive out somewhere and just park on the side of the road and do some plain air painting everywhere I get inspired by everything 
Um, I don't actually get inspired by music that much, really enough. I used to get inspired by it a lot more. I think if I was maybe more character driven, I would get inspired by music, but I tend to listen to like generic lo-fi or audiobooks when I make art. So they're that very inspiring for the artistic process, I find. <laughs> My next one is one that I get sometimes and it's how do I balance life and art. This one is a bit funny because you on YouTube might not know this, I'm sure people on Instagram know this, but I don't work as an artist full-time. Art is not my full-time job. I work full-time as a quality engineer for a medical device company. So it's not at all artistic. It's not related to anything that I do online. It's very, very different work. So I work 40 hours a week doing that. And it's uh, it's hard to balance art and work sometimes, but I kind of tell myself that I'm working two jobs. This is This is my dream job that I'm working on the side and then my regular job outside of that. But everyone from work sees this. No, you don't. I love my job. I I just try to work my art around my regular job. It's it's just about making time for it. Usually, I'll try to paint like kind of like after work. It can be harder in the evenings when I don't have as much sunshine because I finish work at half four. So then, so oftentimes there's not enough light. So I can only do a partial piece or a short, quick one. But then, obviously come spring and summer I'll have really long evening times like all the way up until like 11 so there will be plenty of long evenings ahead of me it's just a little bit more difficult in the winter but yeah I try to paint four times a week one of those being a weekend or maybe I'll say do two paintings on a Saturday and that will be two of my days you know so I try to create like four pieces for social media a week so it's just making the time to do that and then in the evenings maybe when I don't have as much light I'll do other stuff like I'll edit photos for Instagram or edit reels or edit YouTube videos and all that as well so it's making the time for those things as well it can be it can be mm, difficult like I said I've been using my planner the Hobonichi Cousin and that has really helped me with uh, planning out tasks for the week and kind of laying out what I can reasonably do within a day especially like within a work day and then on Saturdays I have to do like grocery shopping and you know all the like the walk the dog every day and all that stuff you know it's like you have to kind of make time for everything else and then fit art in around that whenever I can. At the end of the day the main thing for me is staying disciplined about my plans and yeah making time for it. I I had an awful habit recently where I would just sit on my phone for like a half an hour or an hour and it just waste time on like TikTok or Instagram or you know places like that and it's it's useless it's time just down the drain and it's like I've been really trying to consciously put my phone down and do some like work instead and then I to combat the amount of time I spend sort of like working and then doing all this artwork and then trying to do all my other adult life tasks. I've dedicated Sundays to a complete day off of art and off of my day job and off of social media. It was my partner's idea. He said to me, he was like, I really think you should just take one day off a week. And I was like, okay, no, you're right. I should. So I listened to him and as normal, He's right, and he's right a lot of the time, even though he, he, he loved to hear me admit that. I won't admit it to his face, but he is right. I do need to take time for myself. So I think, yeah, you can work hard and keep at it. You just have to make time for art, but you should also consciously make time for yourself and not be silly like me and not make time for yourself. So, yeah, I think that is it. If you liked seeing these mini studies, let me know. And if you tried them out yourself, let me know how they went. Because I think they're a very nice little way to chill out, make some kind of like quick, easy art where there's not a lot of, you know, rules or limitations or pressure or anything like that about it. And let me know if you liked this little voiceover chatty Q&A type bit that I've done. Uh, I'm not used to talking to a camera or a microphone or anything like that. It feels really weird and I feel silly, but... I think 
maybe it's worth it. I think this probably won't be the last Q&A video I do or the last kind of like chatty question you video. So if you have any more questions or anything that you want to know about my process or anything really in general, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. As always, my materials I've used will be listed down in the description. I don't think I'll have a listing for this sketchbook because I bought it from local art shop at two euro. I don't even know what brand it is. Everything else will be listed down in the description below. So yeah, please give me a little like if you liked this video. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe if you want to see more cute landscape art studio vlogs from my little cozy cottage corner and if you are subscribed thank you for sticking around thank you for watching this video and yeah i will see you later have a lovely day bye